Welcome to Senadiman Education Foundation once again. The only true wisdom is in knowing you, knowing you know nothing. We started this uh, knowledge sharing platform way back in 2007 by releasing a brochure from our institute by Antonio Longo, who is the inventor of stapler hemorrhoidectomy. Antonio Longo was from Italy. We launched Senadipin Education Foundation in Jan 2012 by releasing a set of educational DVDs. It was released by Dr. Sion Han Kim, a colorectal surgeon from Korea. Then we started uh, having six months and one year free fellowship programs, which are all hands on in basic and advanced laparoscopy surgeries. These are some of the visuals of the contact classes we have. We used to give hands-on uh, training in, in laparoscopic uh, endosuturing. With the advent of COVID, we changed the platform to online. And the logo was inaugurated or released by Professor Palini Velu himself from India. And then we started online programs. We started our online live surgeries in uh, Facebook Live. The first Facebook Live was a laparoscopic anti-reposition. Then we did a lap Whipple's uh, surgery in YouTube Live in August 2020. And the link was shared to the members of St. Adam Education Foundation. Then we started uh, to have uh, talks with uh, world leaders like uh, Dr. Tega Vakabashi. Recently, we started international fellowship programs in laparoscopy SPB surgery, lap colorectal surgery, lap upper GA surgery, and uh, therapeutic endoscopy. Lap SPB surgery uh, from Tokyo Medical University under Dr. Nakaka Vichi, lap colorectal surgery by Dr. Leroy, upper GA surgery by Sio Shieto, and therapeutic endoscopy by Rajesh Puri, India. These are the visuals of some of the candidates of Senadip Education Foundation who had uh, gone for free fellowship program uh, at Tokyo Medical University under the mentorship of uh, Professor Nagaka Vayuchi. And for the next batch, we have received almost 4, 18 applications from 68 countries. Uh, in the season one, we had a 28 webinars with world leaders. In one of the meetings, uh, the ERA Society has tweeted in his uh, Twitter account that our chairman, Professor Ole Lingus, gave a wonderful ERA talk on, uh, on the recent advances at the Senadipin Education Foundation, on the, one of the largest online meetings with the more than 1,400 delegates from 72 different countries, is their tweet. We have appearance in social media, we have Facebook group, we have uh, WhatsApp groups are having members of more than 4,000. And we have a YouTube channel, all the webinar videos are available for free reference in the YouTube channel of Sanatipan Education Foundation. Now, recently we started uh, chapters in various countries with the help of ambassadors of Senad Bin Education Foundation in those countries. And these are the uh, ambassadors of our foundation in different countries. Uh, we have presence in nearly 100 countries and uh, we have chapters in 45 countries. And we are planning to have collaboration with the various uh, uh, international universities. Our vision is to disseminate skills and knowledge to all the new kind corners of the globe for the benefit of the underprivileged society with no geographical boundaries, with zero financial motive, so that a wider spectrum of population is benefited. Today, we have two eminent speakers. Dr. Teiga Wakayabashi from Tokyo, Japan, and Dr. 
subramesh subramaneshwar rao my dear friend from uh, india they will be officially introduced by one of our um, ambassadors before that the ambassador is from uh, iraq uh, she is dr rawa satar she is a general surgery specialist uh, from iraq before that let me invite to the next webinar which is happening on 12th of february 2023 on minimally invasive rotorectus repair by dr victor radu from romania so all the participants are requested to mute their mic on entry if possible kindly acknowledge by renaming your device this is for certificate purpose if you if you have not renamed your device by your name you will not get certificates participants logging from outside india are requested to reveal their identity in the chat box so that the host can acknowledge them raise your hand if you want to intervene everybody will be given permission to unmute their mic if they want to speak if you are on a portable device please mute your audio and hide your video for any queries regarding the training programs fellowship programs or any webinars links for webinars and all please write to me senadiban@gmail.com i with this i invite dr rawa satar from iraq to give her uh, introduction of dr subramaneshwar rao and uh, dr taika wakabashi uh, dr dr uh, satar uh thank you uh professor baiju for uh, this introduction and thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about the speakers um uh, dr rawa abdi satar a general surgery uh, specialist i'm the uh, iraq cef ambassador and i'm uh, very proud to be elected by professor baiju himself to represent uh, the sinadipan education foundation in iraq and uh, inshallah i will be introducing the speakers Uh, good evening and uh, dr subramanesh and uh, dr taiga and welcome to this webinar and uh, we are delighted to invite you and uh, to um, uh, to uh, give you the chance to talk in this webinar about this uh, 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 this uh, uh, subject uh, about icg navigation and liver surgery We will first talk about uh, Professor Subramanesh. His name is Subramanesh Arora. He is uh, the director and the head of the Department of Surgical Oncology in Indo-American Cancer Hospital and Research Institute in Hyderabad, India. He is a researcher in oncology and surgery with on, uh, with above 100 publications. He has been involved in cancer care for over uh, 25 years. He's a member of many associations in India like the Association of Surgeons of India, Indian Association of Surgical Oncology, Hyderabad Surgeon Society, Astami Association of India, the Association of Gynae Oncologists of India, International Society of Parenteral and Enteral Nutrition, Guidelines on uh, Cancer Nutrition, Advisor and Proctor in Pace Foundation for Surgical uh, Skill Enhancement. His clinical areas of interest are minimal access surgery with a special focus on thoracic gastrointestinal gynecologic and genitourinary cancers. Next please. Uh now we will talk about uh, uh, the professor Supramanesh who will uh, hel- hold the job of uh, directing the webinar. Dr. Taiga Wakabaya, she will uh, speak about uh, ICG navigation during surgery. Uh, he is the, uh, uh, the son of his, uh, he is a successor of his father, he, uh, who is uh, a pioneer in advanced uh, laparoscopic surgeries and uh, 
particularly in hepatobiliary procedures. He is also, uh, Taiga Wakabayashi is a hepatobiliary surgical uh, trainee since April 2022 in the Center for Advanced Treatment of the Hepatobiliary and Pancreatic Diseases. He possesses an up-to-date knowledge of the surgical treatment of hepatobiliary and pancreatic diseases, particularly on the endocyanine green guided liver surgeries. And he is specialized in minimally invasive digestive surgery with a focus on surgical anatomy of the liver. He is an academic researcher from Kyo University in Tokyo, Japan. He's a, he has an international background from studying in France via the, a research fellowship in ERCAD France, um, which is a very well-known uh, fellowship. He, uh, he was an invited symposium speaker of, uh, at the Korean Society of Endoscopic Laparoscopic Surgeons 2022. Uh, he had, uh, luckily he had a recent article, next please, about endocyanine green fluorescent navigation in liver surgery. He published this systematic review in the paper of Annals of Surgery, which is a Scopus ranked journal. He also participated in control trial and international multicenter study on the impact of endocyanine green fluorescence guided liver surgery, concentrated, uh, concentrating on parenchymal preserving anatomic liver resection using different staining approach. And uh, we will give the uh, uh, the microphone for Dr. Subraman Nayish to continue on leading this uh, wonderful webinar. Thank you, Professor Baiju. Thank you, Dr. Rabab, for the nice introduction of the, uh, the moderator and speaker. Uh, uh, Dr. Subraman Rao, can you see the participants? Uh, it is. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I would not have expected anything less than this, Baiju, with the yeah. efforts that you have been putting in to connect the practically the the uh, surgical fraternity across the world ambassadors is something uh, is, is a word that i really liked i thought there is only one ambassador which represents the country but you have redefined uh, the word amb ambassador by having surgical ambassadors across the world world i really pray for more power to you so that you continue this good work lots of people have learned so much by interaction on on this uh, platform. Uh, welcome uh, Taiga Wakabayashi uh, for this uh, uh, fortnightly uh, uh, web-based uh, program of the prestigious Baiju Senadipan, uh, uh, Senadipan Education Foundation. And uh, my, I uh, invite you to speak to us about uh, ICG navigation in surgery. I understand from your CV and the and your publications, that that most of you, uh, your work is in hepatobiliary and predominantly hepatic. We are all waiting to listen to you, and there are many more on the YouTube. So about 400 people are waiting to listen to you. Welcome to this webinar. Oh, thank you very much for this uh, very nice introduction and. Uh, Professor Senadipa, uh, for inviting me uh, to uh, hear at uh, this uh, nice foundation present. Um, <clears throat> but this is a very prestigious mm -hmm. invitation for me. So, can I start the presentation or uh, should I uh, oh, sure. talk a bit? No. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, I don't want to lose time, so I just want to start sharing my screen. Yeah, it's visible. Okay, so can you see? Yeah. So um, today I'm gonna talk about the ICG first and navigation in liver resection, liver surgery. So let's get started. So I have no COI uh, to disclose here. Okay, so, okay, as you all may know, uh, endocyanin green ICG is a cyanin dye used in medical diagnostics. It is used for uh, determining cardiac output, hepatic function, liver and gastrointestinal blood flow, 
and for uh, opsomic angiography, and so on. Actually, ICG binds to plasma proteins, and protein-bound ICG emits light with a peak wavelength of around 830 nanometer when illuminated with near-infrared light. So when we search um, ICG, a fluorescence surgery in PubMed search, uh, we found that this, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, upward increase uh, of the publication uh, time by time. So a lot of uh, interest uh, increasing time by time uh, for ICG fluorescent guided surgery in the last two decades, especially. So I'm gonna uh, talk about the difference between simulation and navigation a little bit here. So the simulation is the Im imitation of the operation of a real world process or system over time. So usually we uh, do this kind of 3D simulation uh, preoperatively uh, to guide uh, uh, surgery itself, and we prepare the surgery, surgical plan, as you may know. So on the contrary, navigation is a field of study that focuses on the process of monitoring and controlling the movement of a craft or vehicle from one place to another. So the navigation uh, should be performed uh, interoperatively uh, in the field of surgery. So this is the uh, interoperative uh, reference of the 3D simulation. So we usually uh, check up the 3D model interoperatively, repeatedly. And then uh, we uh, could find the uh, target portal pedicle or uh, venous branch you know, intravascular structures like this. So uh, back to the intercyanine green. Uh, intercyanine green navigation in liver resection uh, is divided into two main, uh, you know, uh, approaches or uh, one of them are tumor detection and another is liver segmentation. So tumor detection is, uh, kind of uh, established methodology. And uh, I'm gonna uh, talk about a little bit about this. So this is a case with uh, three nodules in right liver and the CT scan, uh, we can uh, distinguish the three nodules in right liver here. Oh, this is a 3D model. <clears throat> uh, but uh, using a uh, auto sign guidance, we have a tumor A, but tumor B and C couldn't be a <clears throat> distinguished by a ultrasound guidance. So we decided to use uh, in the signing green interoperatively, and uh, we can find uh, these three nodules. Uh, these three nodules are uh, relatively uh, existed on the surface, near the surface of the liver. So we uh, resected the three nodules with a sufficient tumor margin like this. So <clears throat> we're gonna move on to the, the approaches of the liver segmentation by using ICG. So first of all, uh, I have to uh, <clears throat> speak about the liver anatomy a little bit. And uh, the left side is the Quinos classification. Uh, depicted on his gravestone in France. The liver is usually uh, divided in uh, eight segments and three major hepatic veins run through the uh, three uh, portal fissure. These segmental borders are currently named as uh, intersegmental planes. And uh, major hepatic veins having, uh, been, have been considered to lie in the intersegmental planes. However, uh, hepatic veins are not always uh, optimal landmarks to identify intersegmental planes uh, in clinical practice. 
and from the result of our uh, literature review. So the Brisbane 2000 terminology is the most famous terminology and classification of the liver segment, and it's corresponding to those surgical extent. Sorry. <clears throat> the Brisbane 2000 terminology is largely based on Quino's classification, and it is, it is easily memorable and allows to clearly name each liver segment. However, Greenow's classification was not portraying precisely individual liver anatomy, so that there has been no uh, standardization on which strategy for anatomic resection should be pursued as standard of practice. So by the way, there are, there are uh, various surface landmarks and uh, it is minimal requirements to understand the anatomy to perform anatomic resection. So like uh, there are 12 uh, surface landmarks. And uh, furthermore, <clears throat> so not only surface landmarks like uh, Grisonian pedicles in hilum or IVC or root of hepatic veins, but also interhepatic structures like Grisonian pedicles in the liver or hepatic veins uh, should be understand, understood interoperatively uh, during the parenchyma transaction. And after a uh, good control of the uh, Grisonian pedicles, we can uh, achieve the, or we can uh, get the demarcation line in the liver surface. And also we can know uh, the ICC fluorescence emission intra, uh, you know, um, in the parenchyma. So we can uh, proceed a parenchymal transaction uh, uh, based on the guidance of the ICC demarcation line inter, um, operatively. So ICG usage is uh, divided into two ways. So one is uh, negative staining and then one is positive staining. So negative staining, uh, we uh, controlled first the uh, Grison and Pedicle and the uh, uh, you know, uh, inject the ICG intravenously, and we can find the uh, uh, intersegmental plane intra, uh, you know, in the parenchyma. And the positive staining, uh, we can have, we can uh, puncture the portal vein, target portal vein, and uh, inject the ICG directly to the portal branch. And then uh, we have the segmental borders, uh, like on the right movie. And uh, we can, uh, you know, perform the parenchymal transaction according to its uh, demarcation line. So first, um, I want to uh, talk about ICG tumor detection and uh, sharing uh, my uh, our operative videos. So this is a laparoscopic segment four partial liver resection for HCC, and uh, you know. We usually uh, perform the liver uh, ICG test, uh, you know, ICG retention test at uh, 15 minutes. Uh, usually 14, uh, two weeks, within two, two weeks prior to surgery. So then uh, we found that this kind of, uh, you know, uh, ICG re retaining in the tumor. And uh, this is a small new lesion uh, we found uh, intraoperatively. So we cut, uh, resect uh, these kind of uh, new lesions as well and uh, send to the pathology. So we can uh, use this uh, ICG emission and <clears throat> like uh, for uh, securing the negative tumor margin so that uh, <clears throat> we could achieve the R0 resection using this uh, ICG tumor detection method. So this is a hepatocellular carcinoma. So we encountered this uh, ICG emission in the transaction plane, but uh, it will be, you know, uh, capsulized. So we can achieve uh, RSA resection for this tumor in this case. So sometimes a tumor 
uh, ICG emission in, from the tumor is uh, like uh, not like this kind of uh, uh, uniform emission, but sometimes partial uh, emission or uh, so-called uh, rim, rim pattern emission, especially in uh, liver meds. So let's move on to the Grisonia approach with ICG negative staining. So we usually, uh, this is a case uh, with uh, eight hepat cells of carcinoma in the segment six, mainly segment six. And this tumor was ruptured uh, two weeks before the surgery. And we uh, uh, embolized the uh, artery, the target, uh, you know, artery and uh, stopped the bleeding. And then we're gonna, uh, we performed the uh, segmentectomy six and sub-segmentectomy five. So usually we start from the cholecystectomy, uh, but uh, detaching the cystic plate from the lenate capsule, this is called like a, um, <clears throat> cystic plate cholecystectomy. Then uh, we taped the hepatitis ligament for a Pringle maneuver. So using the Pringle maneuver and uh, extracting the hepatitis ligament towards the uh, uh, ventral side, we can easily uh, enter the uh, Grisonia, <clears throat> encircle the Grisonia chest like this. So this is a, <clears throat> uh, so we're gonna uh, take the G6, Grisonia pedicle six, because this tumor is located on the segment, segment six. So, <clears throat> So usually these kind of uh, small branches, small uh, branches, this is called anchor, like uh, <clears throat> uh, very small branches from the hilum. And then uh, cut this kind of anchor, we can easily uh, encircle. The, this is a uh, anterior branch of the uh, Grisonian pedicle. And then <clears throat> we're gonna encircle the one of the branch of the G5 here. And uh, clamping the G G6 <clears throat> and clamping also the G5, one of the G5, uh, we could uh, make the good blood control. And uh, we inject this ultrasound uh, uh, contrast agent to secure the, you know, tumor is inside the uh, uh, ischemic area. And then we're gonna uh, inject the ICG. So we usually uh, inject the ICG 0 0.5 milligram per body. And then we could achieve this kind of uh, uh, beautiful uh, demarcation line on the liver surface. So we use the ICG camera uh, like this. So this camera uh, is a high resolution using uh, 4K images and uh, having the uh, overlay mode, which means uh, this kind of ICG emission on the white light image. So uh, we could uh, transect the liver parenchyma along this uh, uh, demarcation line. So left side is uh, non-color coded and the right side is a uh, color coded area. So we uh, precisely follow this uh, watershed uh, during this parenchymal transaction. So this is called the negative staining technique. <clears throat> so in this case, uh, <clears throat> we uh, use the harmonic device uh, for achieving the cramp crushing method. And uh, <clears throat> when uh, su surroundings uh, G Grisonian pedicle, uh, uh, resect, uh, transected, we just gonna divide the <clears throat> G uh, Grisonian pedicle <clears throat> and proceed the liver parenchyma transaction like this. <clears throat> so harmonic is a ultra uh, sound, you know, uh, ultrasonic shears scissors. So we could use uh, this device uh, like uh, 
<clears throat> the various way. So we divide the G6 as well. So using a cramp crushing method, uh, we can uh, divide the parenchyma uh, very fast. So we sometimes use a uh, uh, QSA, but uh, uh, in case of small hepatectomy like this, uh, we use a cramp crushing method using uh, this harmonic device. So we could, uh, you know, shorten the operative time like this. So this is a transaction plane and the uh, negative margin was achieved. Mm. So next case is a segmentectomy eight or eight CC. So hepatocellular carcinoma located in segment eight. Mm. So we plan to perform a segmentectomy eight. So, uh, as previously uh, described, we uh, started from the cholecystectomy and then uh, <clears throat> encircled the uh, ante right anterior branch of the Grisonian pedicle. So we we don't hesitate to uh, divide the parenchyma uh, <clears throat> ventral side of the Grisonian pedicle like this. So then uh, we can avoid to break the Grisonian chest so this is our concept. <clears throat> and uh, for encircled G8, we, uh, in this case, we use the subtraction method. Like uh, this uh, red tape is encircled now uh, G8, uh, but uh, it is, you know, subtracts the G5 from the anterior branch of the uh, Grisonian pedicle and then we uh, encircle G8. Then uh, injecting the ICG, we can achieve, we could achieve this uh, demarcation line by uh, ICG guidance. So we could uh, <coughs> perform a parenchymal dissection uh, precisely along the ICG coded and non-coded area. So in this plane, uh, we can uh, find a middle hepatic vein <coughs> And uh, so this is a red tape uh, G8. So when we found, find uh, this uh, G8, we can uh, divide G8 by uh, double clip. Mm. So this is an anterior fissure vein uh, drained to a middle hepatic vein. So we encircle this uh, vein, venous branch, and uh, we're gonna uh, divide it by stapler. So the transaction uh, performed the uh, medial to lateral. So that um, <clears throat> this means uh, uh, central to peripheral in terms of the vein approach. So <clears throat> this is a specimen So we could achieve the negative margin here. So this is a segment X seven for hepatocellular carcinoma. So this uh, tumor located on segment, segment seven and a little bit protruded to uh, segment eight. So we plan to perform segment X seven and uh, sub-segment X uh, eight. Uh, those are portion. So after the cholecystectomy, <clears throat> we encircle the hepatoduodenal ligament and the uh, mobilization of the right liver was performed. So this short hepatic vein uh, should be uh, clipped and divided. And also IVC ligament uh, should be uh, ligated, and uh, you know this is that was a right hepatic vein. So <clears throat> now we started to uh, perform Grisonian approach. First, uh, we divided the 
G1C. This is a collate low branch of the portal peri uh, Grisonian pedicle. Then uh, we could achieve the wider window for uh, encircling the G7 directly like this. This is a uh, Grisonian pedicle seven. And the clamping the G7, uh, we injected the ICG and then uh, we found this uh, ICG demarcation line. <clears throat> so this is an inferior right hepatic vein. So we uh, staple this uh, inferior right hepatic vein. Then uh, we uh, resected the liver from the root of right hepatic vein um, to the peripherally. So this uh, Bain approach should be called the uh, cranial dorsal approach for the Bain approach. And this is a, a Grisonian pedicle G8 dorsal portion. Uh, so we uh, achieved the subsegmentectomy G8 uh, S, S8 dorsal as well here. And then uh, we proceeded the parenchymal transaction. Uh, in between uh, color coded and non coded area. So, small branches uh, for uh, segment seven, D7 was uh, divided. <clears throat> so, QSA uh, is uh, moved uh, from the dorsal, granial to caudal. So this approach uh, is called like a granule dorsal approach again. And then a uh, specimen was uh, extracted. <clears throat> so right hepatic vein is uh, appeared in the transaction plane and the tumor was uh, successfully uh, resected. Then uh, let's move on to ICG positive staining approach. So in this case, uh, we, uh, for positive staining, we puncture the fourth order portal vein of the segment four. So we could find the uh, portal vein, Venus branch under ultrasound guidance and puncture uh, by a PTCD needle and inject ICG directly to the portal branch so that we could find that this uh, uh, ICG stained area. And this case is a uh, sub segmentectomy six for liver meds. <clears throat> so liver meds located in the segment six and uh, we plan to perform positive staining approach for these two more. And uh, we plan to puncture the, this uh, portal branch. This blue uh, area should be resected. And then uh, this is an interoperative finding. Uh, so this uh, BK Medical Ultrasound Probe uh, has a hole and uh, this uh, <clears throat> Needle guide is very useful to perform a positive staining approach. And we have to uh, visualize the portal, target portal branch uh, longitudinally like this. And then uh, we could uh, achieve portal puncture. And then we usually uh, inject the ultrasound contrast agent first and then uh, ICG so that uh, we uh, can, uh, you know. Uh, <clears throat> repeat the uh, staining. And then uh, we found the ICG stained area and the Pringle tape was encircled like this. <clears throat> so sometimes uh, a positive staining um, make uh, spotty stay staining. And uh, we, uh, for this patient, we plan uh, to perform a uh, partial resection uh, a little bit wider than this uh, uh, ICG per pertained area. 
<clears throat> the positive staining for a small branch or a multiple branch uh, requires uh, expertise of the ultrasound uh, uh, manipulation and uh, portal puncture. So a little bit uh, usually difficult. <clears throat> okay. So <clears throat> in the last year, uh, we published uh, this systematic review focusing on uh, especially dose and timing of uh, ICG administration. And then uh, <clears throat> we found, <clears throat> we found uh, 72 articles uh, on ICG liver resection. And in the papers, there are a lot of uh, modality and a lot of uh, companies uh, you know, uh, produced uh, uh, infrared uh, light camera, but uh, various function uh, are uh, observed. So this is a major commercially available laparoscopic fluorescent camera. <clears throat> so generally speaking, maybe a high resolution with overlay mode uh, could facilitate to uh, achieve, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, interoperative uh, differentiation between uh, ischemic and non-ischemic area. So as you can see, you could see in the previous videos. So we usually uh, use the overlay mode of the near infrared camera. So overlay mode is uh, kind of very uh, useful for uh, interoperative parenchymal transaction. So this is a practical scheme of uh, ICG fluorescence for MI liver resection in our paper. So for liver segmentation, uh, 0.25 milligram per body of ICG dose uh, is uh, most frequently used in positive staining. On the contrary, 2.5 2 milligram per body of ICG dose uh, is was more frequent, most frequently used in negative staining. And for tumor detection uh, in normal liver, 0 0.5 milligram per kilogram, uh, three to seven days prior to surgery, uh, is was more frequently used, and 2.5 milligram per body one day before surgery uh, was also acceptable. But in impaired liver function, uh, 0 0.5 milligram per kilogram uh, should be uh, administered seven to 14 days before surgery. By the way, uh, negative staining uh, and the positive staining, which is better? So negative staining seems to provide a higher demarcation, better scores in terms of general quality of fluorescence image and comfort satisfaction of the surgeon during technique in robot-assisted liver resection in our paper. On the contrary, positive staining requires the expertise for manipulating IOUS and needle puncture, especially in MIS setting. Uh, so we think, we believe uh, negative staining uh, using a Grisonian approach is a good, uh, uh, is a way to go maybe. So the question is, is Grisonian approach mandatory for negative staining? So the Grisonian, extrahepatic Grisonian approach was first performed by Professor Takasaki uh, from Japan. And he insisted that the Quinault's classification was not based on the ramification of Grisonian branches. And he, in his concept, the liver was separated in three segments according to the second order Grisonian branches. And each segment was fed by six to eight tertiary branches of the Grisonian pedicle. The area uh, perfused by each tertiary branch, so-called cone unit, can be systematically resected. Mm. And uh, Professor Sugioka advocated uh, there are four surface landmarks and six gates to facilitate extrahepatic Grisonian approach. And in his salary, there are a gap between Lenek capsule and Hyla plate 
and one should approach this gap to encircle each second order Grisonian pedicle. And after two decades from the Brisbane 2000 terminology, the update terminology was defined in PAM HBP consensus meeting in Tokyo two years ago. So this consensus meeting was held uh, for surgeons to understand precise surgical anatomy of the liver in the era of minimally invasive HPP surgery. So of the 15 articles published in the meeting, this consensus statement paper importantly addressed the new, cry, uh, new definition of monosegmentectomy and subsegmentectomy. In such small anatomic resection, Grisonian approach are preferable, uh, especially for second or higher order Grisonian pedicle during minimally invasive anatomic resection of the liver. So for ICG negative staining, so this is a paper from Beraldi et al. They presented the favorable outcomes of uh, 86 cases who underwent laparoscopic anatomic parenchymal sparing resections using the Grisonian approach from the liver highland and the negative staining approach. So in their article, negative staining technique was achieved in all segmentectomies, including posterior superior segment segmentectomies accounted for more than 30%. So Berardi used a relatively small amount of ICG dose, 0.5 milligram per body to avoid the contamination from the adjacent liver segments. On the contrary, for positive staining. So this is a paper from uh, Aoki from Japan. So they reported their unique technique. So under general anesthesia, Portal branches of tumor bearing liver segments are preoperatively targeted and punctured under ultrasound guidance with an 18 gauge PTCD needle introduced through the abdominal wall. So, subsequently, a small amount of ICG, one milliliter of uh, 0.025 milligram per milliliter, is injected into the portal branch slowly for avoiding the risk of, risk of ICG retrograde flow into neighboring segments with uh, undesired staining. So I'm gonna uh, talk about the robotic Grisona approach with ICG negative staining. So this is a case of uh, segmentectomy three for HCC. The tumor is located on the segment, segment three. So we, pre we decided to preserve the segment two. So without performing a lateral sectionectomy for this patient. So two branches of the Grisonian pedicle three uh, are first encircled like this. So in robotic approach, the robotic wrist uh, can facilitate the Grisonian approach uh, easily from the liver highland to encircle the Grisonian pedicle. And uh, injecting the ICG for ICG, we could find uh, uh, this uh, nice uh, demarcation line. <clears throat> and uh, for a robotic approach, we use a cramp caching method only. And the uh, target Grisonian pedicle was divided. And this is the second one. We divided uh, <clears throat> Grisonian. Um, pedicle three, uh, two Grisonian pedicle three. And uh, using the uh, ICG camera mode, this is called firefly mode, uh, we could find the <clears throat> intersegmental plane like this. But generally speaking, uh, the <clears throat> Little bit, uh, this is not an overlay mode, so a little bit uh, background image are uh, dark, so it is a little bit difficult to find the uh, uh, precise uh, intersegmental plane only by using this uh, camera mode. But, uh, you know, uh, sufficient tumor margin can be achieved by this uh, kind of uh, small uh, segmentectomy. Uh, so this patient, uh, uh, the post-operative course was uneventful 
and the negative surgical margin uh, was achieved. And one more case for robotic segmentectomy. So this is a, a robotic sub-segmentectomy sub five and six. So two branches from segment six, uh, to segment five and the two branches to segment six uh, are identified for uh, feeding the tumor itself. So this tumor is uh, HCC. So we plan to resect the uh, four branches and perform a sub-segmentectomy. So we started from uh, cholecystectomy detaching the cystic plate from the lineal capsule. And then uh, it facilitates to uh, reach the anterior uh, branch of the Grisonian pedicle. And after the Pringle maneuver, uh, we could reach the right branch of the Grisonian pedicle. So this is ANCA. So we uh, divided the ANCA and uh, approach the right branch of the liver uh, Grisonian pedicle and encircle this. And the step-by-step -step approach, we found uh, this is a anterior branch of the Grisonian pedicle. And uh, this red tape uh, show the subtraction method. So we subtracted the anterior branch from the right branch and then we encircle the posterior branch of the Grisonian pedicle. And then uh, we uh, divide the one of the Grisonian uh, pedicle six, and one more Grisonian pedicle six uh, could fi find and uh, encircle by a silicon tape. And also uh, G5 uh, can be, could be uh, encircled step by step and clamped. Uh, and also G6 is uh, di was divided. Uh, sorry, and this is this was one more uh, G G5, I think. And then uh, we could found, find the uh, uh, demarcation line. <clears throat> So along the, um, this watershed between uh, <clears throat> ischemic and non-ischemic uh, liver. <clears throat> so we could clearly uh, uh, distinguish the ischemic and non-ischemic area by uh, using a ICG segmentation way approach like this. This is uh, called ICG negative staining. And we proceeded the uh, liver parenchymal tract section by cramp crash cramping method. And then uh, G5 was transected. So QSA was, is not available uh, for, for the moment in the robotic setting. So only cramp crash method. Uh, can be available, and uh, we uh, proceeded the trans transaction by cramp crushing method. And the uh, specimen was uh, extracted. So negative surgical margin was achieved. <clears throat> so I'm gonna <clears throat> finish my uh, presentation. So this is take home message. Uh, ICG fluorescence navigation can be a complement to the ergonomics and tactile sensation in MI liver surgery, facilitating sufficient tumor margin. So for liver segmentation, positive staining requires the expertise for manipulating uh, ultrasound on portal vein puncture. Now on the contrary, negative staining with extrahepatic Grisonian approach makes the staining stable without overtime contamination from adjacent segments. And robotic approach facilitates the Grisonian approach by using its flexible wrist articulation. 
So this is a 30 day mortality uh, in the gastrointestinal uh, surgery in Japan. So hepatectomy uh, <clears throat> showed the uh, highest uh, mortality rate uh, among the gastrointestinal surgery. So, so we have to consider how we could improve both the outcomes and the quality of the surgery to succeed the legacy of the legendary HBD surgeons. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Taiga Wakabashi for the wonderful uh, disposition of a uh, new technique. Uh, in liver surgeries uh, with the combination of ICG, ultrasound, robotic, uh, 3D uh, imaging, everything. So we'll be having a lot of questions from the floor. Uh, before going to the questions, uh, let me invite Dr. Uh, T.S. Rao for his presentation. And uh, we'll have the discussion after his presentation. Oh, uh Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to, to all those who have logged in, close to 400 of them. Uh, Baiju, how much time do I have? Uh, you can uh, take uh, as, as far as you wish to have. Okay. <laughs> that is the best part of this uh, um, program. Okay, I'll share my screen. Sure. Where is that? Yes. Is it there? Yeah, yeah, it's available. Yeah, but thoroughly enjoyed uh, the presentation. I I must humbly submit that I'm not a very prolific uh, liver surgeon. I was doing a bit of liver surgery, but now I, I don't do liver surgery. Is it there on the uh, full screen, uh, Baju? It's not uh, full screen yet. Ah, okay. Now I can make it, yeah. Now, so surgery is all about anatomy and common sense. It's something that I always thought common sense cannot be improved, but anatomical sense can be improved. And uh, surgery is also all about colors and contrast. Human eye is, is a very, very powerful weapon and experienced eye is much more powerful. You can actually see these two videos. The first one is of the single chip era the same procedure, transthoracic esophagectomy, uh, thoracoscopic esophagectomy being done. The, the second one is in a 4K mode. So you can clearly see that the contrast is, is significantly different. So th that adds to the efficacy of the surgery. While I was reading to, to develop this talk, I understood that there are 108 shades of gray. I always thought black, white, and gray. <clears throat> And that is probably the reason why a radiologist reads our conventional scans, both MRI and CT, which do not have colors, except when you, when you actually add it uh, through the software. They read the scans better than us because of their experience. I understand there are very experienced uh, uh, surgeons who are, who are better than radiologists when, when they read their scans but I'm, I don't belong to uh, that group at all. So what we need to do is to add colors to everything that you see if you have to flatten the learning curve. If you want a youngster to read uh, th these scans or read the anatomy as good as an experienced person, I think it's important to add colors. And with the growing number of uh, uh, residency positions, I think it's important that you need to add artificial intelligence so that the learning curve can be flattened. Fluorescence is not something that is new. It has always been there, enhancing safety of public. You, you see in uh, the, the, the workers early in the morning cleaning roads, wearing these vests to improve safety while it is dark. The, you may not see the human being, but you will see the vest and that enhances safety of, of the people. And not just the people, but, but, but the automobiles also. When they are illuminated, like this, the roads are illuminated like this, even in pitch darkness, you can actually see where, where you are traveling. So it's important to brighten up the path if you want to make things safe. So this is not new in medicine, it's decades old. It started with uh, um, brain tumors and then uh, it was used uh, over decades in ophthalmology. And then 
by the hepatologists and the liver surgeons in uh, liver function assessment, whether it is to understand the functional liver remnant or otherwise. So it, all this that, that has happened and uh, all this that Taiga Wakabayashi has spoken is not an invention, but it's definitely an innovation. So uh, it is fluorescence guided surgery, although fluorescence is not new, but fluorescence guided navigation is something that is new. new. So it, when we were understanding this, one of our residents got, got himself injected to understand how, what the machine is. We bought this about five years back, the, the Stryker 16-88 camera. And then, and then we worked on this and we do about we use uh, these cameras in every organ system. It's a 650 bed cancer care facility. So we, we went on learning like this and while going through literature. Upper GI surgery, when we are discussing, uh, the, the, the role is in multiple areas. Thoracic duct is probably the most important. And the, 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 why do we need to actually map the thoracic duct? Because it has anatomic variations, and once there are anatomic variations, the chances of injury are high, and uh, mm, uh, uh, it can range from anywhere from one to three percent after hysterectomies, and it can be potentially morbid. And if you don't intervene on time or treat them uh, carefully by conservative treatment, uh, the, the, it can actually kill many of these patients. So real-time fluorescence imaging has become a boon in this area. Where if, when you can visualize on the table, you can preserve it. Or clip it if it is if you have to clear it for the for oncological reasons. Or if there is an injury, you could clip it on the table so that the patient would not have any postoperative morbidity. We started using the small bubble mesentery for the injections, and then the the groin skin or the web space of the uh, toes. Uh, but understood that we could not uh, image it well, and the and the time duration that was necessary was much longer, and uh, and and the density of the dye that is seen was also not very high. So the, then we went through Japanese uh, work, one major paper that was published, uh, wherein the uh, the lymph node, the groin lymph node was chosen as an injection. About 19 patients were. Uh, um, uh, subjected to this and all 19 showed thoracic duct. So we started using this. Then, and what is important is to inject about 2.5 milligrams into one cc into, into node on either side. And what's also important is to see it, the node becoming tumescent on the ultrasound. Once that happens, I think the success rate is very, very high. And you can actually see in these two videos how different it could be for a beginner. The, the video on the right side is which, uh, clearly shows how uh, as soon as you go in, as soon as you cut the pleura, the thoracic duct is, uh, is visible all along. Uh, for a trained eye on the left side, it should not make a, too much of a difference as long as you have good uh, visuals uh, the, uh, with which you operate and if there is no bleeding, I think you can still see the thoracic duct all right, but but that that requires lots of experience and and a long learning curve. So technology, uh, Taiga was talking about the overlay mode, and we started with uh, laparoscopy systems without the overlay mode. Robotics uh, also do not have an overlay mode, and that's what it does. You keep on swapping, uh, so switching the the the, uh, the uh, uh, white light and the and the near infrared uh, light. Uh, to see and then to operate to, to and uh, this produces a, a bit of fatigue and and uh, in darkness if you have to operate then the anatomy is, is never clear so what you would want is this mode and i think this is the 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 co component of disruptive technology small addition but it has made a major difference the overlay mode has has actually become the, the most important innovation within this uh, fluorescence guided navigation. So you can, while you are uh, seeing the, the greenness on the near infrared light, you see the rest of the anatomy in the white light and you continue to operate seamlessly. Multiple modes have, have been added. They're all, they're all uh, additions which 
where which can uh, be used depending on what anatomy you, you are actually doing and what uh, reason you are actually using the fluorescence two patients can clearly see the difference both of them were very sick because of an injury in the of the thoracic duct in the neck the first one was because of a thyroidectomy this the, the lower one was because of a stab injury both were very sick and this is where you want to go in rapidly and and come out rapidly the first the uh, the, the video on the left side took about about 25 minutes for me to, to com complete the clipping the one on the on the right uh, on the lower side my resident actually was 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 operating he took 5 minutes to to complete this only because as soon as you go in you can actually see the duct the the video without the icg we had to identify the the azagas vein and then dissect dorsally to reach the iota and only then you are convinced that the entire thoracic duct is 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 has come into the clip because you have just one chance to save these patients who are who are extremely sick after a leakage of uh, uh, the lymph and uh, chyle for about uh, one to two months so i think uh, it would help these patients immensely when there is an injury of the thoracic duct in salvage esophagectomies uh, when the patients receive definitive chemo radiation that's when things become very difficult uh, you, you would want to preserve the thoracic duct if you, if especially if the patient is a cirrhotic and uh, that's when this can really help because of the dense fibrosis the other clinical situation is when the patient uh, does not come for surgery between 6 and 12 weeks when the dose is higher or the duration is longer i think uh, the uh, surgery becomes much more difficult because of fibrosis that's when the 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 thoracic duct imaging can help and uh, there are enough reports in the literature suggesting that the, the, even after you either you you uh, identify the thoracic duct and preserve it completely or you would have ligated clipped it electively but still there are chyle leaks and after we started doing the groin injection we understood that there are multiple variations of thoracic duct anatomy surprised that before we we started doing this we would have actually included quite a few of them they may not may or may not be of great consequence but when they become of consequence it it becomes uncomfortable both for the patient and the surgical team because you have a pulled up stomach in the thorax which needs to be taken care of and a, a much more sicker patient with edematous uh, tissue planes so it's important to visualize on the table and and if some technology is going to add to it uh, without too much of expenditure i think uh, that is a great boon you can actually see a tear drop like like branch here in, in multiple modes and and here you have a hairpin like branch going down every third patient has some anomaly or the other it may not be a major deviation from the basic anatomy you will always have a big large duct sometimes you have double ducts so these things are seen only after icg has come into work and you can have double duct, large ducts like this and you can also have ducts that are crossing the bronchus and coming onto the right side i thought this is this is actually uh, on on the white light i thought this is this is the bronchial artery but when 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 we switched the the icg camera on we realized it's a thoracic duct that's crossing along the uh, azagas vein and draining onto the other side so it's always good to see and 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 tackle it uh, if you don't want any lymph leak post operatively you would always want to remove your chest tubes uh, uh, after 48 hours and even if we don't need to re-explore these patients if the lymph leak is higher the chest tubes stay longer and the patient stays longer in intensive care and in the hospital so uh, it's important to see all this and uh, in, in a transatrial procedures not very common these days also you actually see that that there are there are multiple other uh, twigs that join the main duct which run across the iota and sometimes along the azagas so to understand that it is not just one duct there sometimes there can be major branches which which can be injured greater curve dissection sometimes can be a challenge that is when you you can actually use this te technique 
although um, initially we were uh, very reluctant to do this because we thought we may not be able to do the uh, icg for the for the conduit but these days we, we understand that there is a rapid uh, um, uh, clearing of the dye so you can actually do a second icg later on so in a, in a very obese patient the trick is to to inject and uh, and uh, do a dorsal dissection first from the fifth or sixth arch on, uh, on the left side um, um, make an opening and then and then look for it dorsally not ventrally even in the most fatty patient the vein will be seen dorsally much better and if you can enhance it with uh, with icg i think it becomes much more easier conduit perfusion conduit is based uh, solely on red gastroplevic artery vascularity can be precarious at the tip because of some mucosal vascular channels uh, leak rates are still in even the best centers up uh, anywhere from 10 to 20% and and we understand that there is data that is coming up that there is a 70% risk reduction following use of icg and that is a very major re reduction of any anastomotic leak anywhere in the body so perfusion assessment is done the dependent length is measured the the this ploic arcade can be of of many types so when you inject you understand that the the first blush is something that that becomes the the best the most vascularized uh, part of it and uh, you also have what is called the the the, the quantity measurement the qp mode you, you can actually see the vascularity the uh, understand the difference of the vascularity the blueness is is not not the best and you actually realize that the part of the momentum that that we thought will pull up to plug the the thoracic inlet is actually blue so we resected that so this this can which would otherwise probably necrose and produce a small abscess in the neck even if it doesn't uh, lead to a leak we've done multiple publications with this work in the stomach the role it seems to be much lesser and something that is slowly expanding when compared to uh, esophageal surgery or uh, pulmonary surgery uh, the, the injection techniques can be subserosal or submucosal we have done a few of these and uh, what it actually does is when when you when you when you do this you you find nodes which are not the standard d2 which uh, light up and uh, and become green so it, it actually increases both the ultra sectioning uh, advantage of these green nodes and uh, a few nodes which are seemingly non regional are actually picked up after this and it also aids in uh, xyo bench dissection the japanese uh, method of doing the surgeon himself uh, sits down patiently and and does the bench dissection which will uh, lead to improvement in the yield everybody talks about the nodal number now for tnm staging the end part of uh, nodal staging and if you are not dissecting enough number of nodes the pathologist and the medical and the radiation oncologist would call you a lesser surgeon one method of doing it is if you have the best pathologist i think i think uh, they would do a great job otherwise believe in yourself do do icg and with an icg the open camera the, the pinpoint camera camera we dissect all these nodes ourselves and send it for grossing to the pathologist we understand that the number of nodes that the same procedure that was done by the same surgeon the number of nodes the yield has increased tremendously after this cholangiography uh, is something that most of the general surgeons would be very keen to do uh, what uh, we we started uh, we we it was serendipity that that we uh, we started uh, uh, understanding this we were injecting it to the groin for thoracic duct visualization and suddenly understood that that the 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 cbd uh, really lights up the cystic duct lights up and then the right hand hepatic left hepatic ducts are also very well seen uh, and uh, we don't do too much of gallbladder or or liver work but whenever we have a patient we use this and and do this procedure much more much more easily with sense of much more safety colorectal surgeries initial experience 
the clinical with the clinical experience we thought we should staple there in an anterior resection we do a site to end anastomosis once again the overlay mode was was not there how green is green is something that that is subjective not not easy to or pleasing to the eye if you don't have the overlay mode things are done in darkness the stapler is anastomosed in darkness once you have the overlay mode the advantage is very obvious the clinical judgment and the icg assessment are matched and if there is needs to be a revision you would do that resect the non green non green and anastomose in the green is the principle we have understood that there were fallacies of visual assessment a senior uh, surgeon thought that, that that is the area where the 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 the, the vascularity is normal but but the icg feels the other way if we had anastomosed here then it would have been a disaster for the patient it doesn't help in all the patient but in, in the, uh, it does help in some patients especially if, if your eye is not very well trained especially in, in colonic vascularity in small bubble vascularity is very obvious but in colon it becomes much more difficult we thought we should staple there everything was set and then we injected the icg the first blush is definitely an inch away from the staple line that we thought we should the, the revision was done and then stapling was done so once in the initial experience itself we understood that it might be may not be completely devascularized but it may be ischemic so if you have anastomosed it can become a stricture you have done a end to end anastomosis otherwise if it, if, uh, if it becomes critical it can even lead to a leak both can can produce tremendous morbidity for the patient coloanal anastomosis uh, it seems to be much more useful because it's very difficult once you pull it down it has to come much lower uh, uh, for the anastomosis uh, you can actually clearly see that that uh, long length of the uh colon here is is well vascularized it's not the same here we went on re revising but understood that the greenness is topping much higher much higher here not very comfortable because the anastomosis there is 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 much more difficult so we went back in mobilized further and anastomosed here so it's not it, uh, it's something that clearly tells you Where, where where you are actually going wrong especially in colonic surgery and uh, we do lots of retroperitoneal tumors wherein the meso colon is resected uh, you, uh, you 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 would understand that the marginal is preserved but not you are not very confident that that you can leave this bowel behind because if if there is a loss of vascularity a large segment of bowel might necrose big huge resections like this after a peritoneal retroperitoneal lymphadenectomy and and resection of retroperitoneal masses it comes very handy because it it actually increases the objectivity and and uh, you can actually compare uh, the assessment of of a trainee a trainee versus a, a, an expert in complex resections it becomes uh, very very useful you inject this and you assess the small bubble the large bubble the the ureter vascularity there yeah, the the cytoreductive procedures that are done for pseudomyxoma peritonitis and uh, various other visceral malignancies the peritoneal surface malignancies uh, ureters are completely devascularized and you you, know, you have this splenic artery there the, the ureters there so it it provides good evidence of one of them getting devascularized so multiple uses in uh, perfusion assessment it's important to standardize your assessment the dose the 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 uh, 
uh, uh, duration and then the, the, the QP mode is something that is being investigated. You can actually see as you move the camera, you can see that it is, it is actually quantified. What its relevance is, is something that is not known to the world as yet, but I think it's important to, to standardize all this, do it in every patient, record it and analyze. So it, it can be a game changer because the anastomotic leak still is around 2%. In this fluorescence guided lymph node dissections in colorectal surgery. The injection can be at the at the root or at the uh, uh, juxta tumorally sub subserotally. And once you activate this, you understand that especially in the D3 lymphadenectomies, uh, this can come very handy in identifying nodes that are not actually re regional. And then it, it also indicates the completion of the resection. You can actually see there that, that all the nodes have been resected. In multiple modes, fluorescent lymph nodes here and, and a little bit of dye on the other side, which is only a leak. There's no clustering of the dye on the, on the side of, of the patient and all the nodes are within the specimen. So it can bring objectivity uh, uh, again into, into your resections. So it, uh, it actually uh, uh, nullifies the difference between an expert and, and a trainee. Completed dissection. You can actually see that there is absolutely no fluorescence in, in, in the bed. All the lymph nodes are fluorescing. That is a, that is the patient side. Absolutely no fluorescence there anywhere in the retroperitoneum. So this is something that that standardizes procedures in in institutions where large volumes and and a lot of trainees are there. Sometimes you can repeat your ICG assessment even after a lymphadenectomy. That is the, the, those are the lymph nodes. You you can actually do that very effectively. There will be a background fluorescence. But we need to observe the first blush if you have to do the perfusion study. Uh, we don't, uh, need not be anxious that if you use it for the lymph node assessment, it will become difficult for the perfusion assessment. Uh, both can be done very well if they are separated by half an hour time. Bench dissection again helps you, us here again. The challenges are that you need to be, be truly protocol based and you need to check the, 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 uh, the ICG mode. We, we went on injecting here. This, the IV line was out of place. And what is also important to check the blood pressure of the patient. And, if the, if the patient is not perfused well, uh, you, you, the study may, may not actually give you any information and slowly everything fills up and, and it, it may become futile to use this as anything. Sometimes everything can become green like this. So it, it's important to follow a, a protocol. The other, other problem can be spills, which can make the procedure much more difficult once there is a spill like this. It, it actually makes it much more difficult than without the ICG. Iliovagin, uh, 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 fistulas are not uncommon in an oncological uh, setup. So uh, um, what we need to do is either use a, a urologist's help in cystoscopy and uh, uh, um, if there is a vesicle fistula, and sometimes use uh, the, the, the image intensifiers and the CM with all the radiation uh, uh, that, the, that the personnel will be exposed. What we could do uh, is 
when, when there is a fistula and then you are worried whether it is colonic or enteral, there have been many colostomies that, that were done for a, for, a, for, a, for a small bowel fistula only to find that the patient still continues to leak from below. So we, uh, what we did here was to just inject uh, uh, ICG diluted in, in uh, distilled water and, we, uh, and uh, while we did the laparoscopy, this was an inoperable patient. What we needed to do was only a diversion and we could clearly see that the whole dye went into the ileum while the colon is, was not, not at all filled. The initial diagnosis for this patient was uh, a colovaginal fistula. So it can help in such situations too. In CRS, again, I was talking about uh, one of those ureters which got devascularized could be diagnosed here with the ICG. Most of the ureter is, is all right, but you can actually see a, a black patch here. In all modes, it was looking devascularized. So, so uh, on table, we, we resected it and uh, spatulated it and anastomosed it. Under ICG guidance, we, we, we resected while, while looking at, at the pinpoint camera. Can be useful in extensive surgery, multiple uses in the same patient. We keep doing ovarian transpositions in rectal cancer. Young rectal cancers are not uncommon, especially in uh, Indian patients. We have a very young population. So uh, mm, uh, you, you do keep seeing these patients and, uh, and we do ovarian transpositions. Ovarian transpositions sometimes mm, can be tricky because the, while you uh, shift the, the, the gonadals up, the uh, vascularity can be lost. You can, you can bring objectivity into, into this by doing uh, mm, ICG and proving that the, the transposed ovary under the liver and under the spleen are actually well vascularized. The uh, ICG can become the surgeon's third eye. It has multiple clinical applications and we have multiple publications on that. And uh, the, the best part of this technique is it's no rocket science. There are no robotics involved in this. It's cheap and effective. It's value for money. You swap, you slide, you see more, you do more and you actually do better. Perfusion studies can compensate for lack of experience. When in trouble, you shoot ICG to troubleshoot and, and, and come out. Come out. Uh, for, for, for those of you who believe in preservation of nature, go green is the, is the theme. For others, uh, I, 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 when, you have, when, you, when you have to preserve the patient's anatomy, I, uh, in endocinin green is the philosophy. Intraoperative fluorescence guided surgery is the new standard of care. Newer technologies and dice are in development. It can be a useful clinical agent and it's safe and easy to use. And it, the future looks very, very promising. Future is all about augmented and virtual realities, friends. That is myself. And the whole thing is virtual. There is there is nothing there on the table. The table is, is our own operation room table, but everything else is on a software in a in, in a camera in a in, in my own phone so you can add colors like this for every organ you, uh, ureter will have a different color nerve will have a different color the vein will have a different color so surgery in future is going to become augmented by artificial intelligence and the it's the work of all all, all, all these wonderful people i'm only a representative of of the of the team thank you very much thank you uh, very much uh, dr uh, ts rao for the wonderful talk actually it was done in a very short notice uh, i asked him to give a presentation in the morning only <laughs> uh, he prepared so well that so much of areas are uh, uh, covered uh, it will be ice it is an ice on top uh, by the presentation by Dr. Taiga Vakayabashi. And uh, now the topic is uh, open for discussion. Uh, Dr. Taiga Vakayabashi, uh, you have seen Dr. T.S. Rao also showing the, his areas of interest. 
like uh, um, intestine, esophagus, colorectal, and all. So there are a lot of questions from the uh, audience. I, we entertain one-to-one -one interaction. Anybody who wanted to ask questions from the uh, audience, they can very well uh, raise their hand and ask question. And uh, Dr. Uh, Rava Sattar, who is the ambassador of uh, Senatim Education Foundation in Iraq, has uh, raised her uh, hand. Uh, Dr. Rava, can you please unmute? Uh, thank you, Professor Baju. <clears throat> thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Tirao and uh, uh, Dr. Taiga for your nice presentations. Uh, really, I wanted to ask uh, Professor um, uh, Tirao if uh, uh, yani, we can use ICG during uh, staging of breast cancers. Is this applicable? Yes, I I I, I, I realized. Uh, basically, my, my dear friend uh, Baiju is a G GI surgeon. Yeah, think, uh, so I've, I've yeah, confined myself to my myself to GI surgery. The, uh, 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 the the ICG has found its uh, use primarily in, in breast and melanoma because central node biopsy was the beginning of ICG. So that is something that I did not touch upon, but it's extremely useful extremely useful in, in um, breast surgery and it's slowly replacing both the both the isotope and the blue dye in uh, in uh, central node biopsy it has made it so simple and uh, you don't need to inject the previous day uh, it's everything is done on the on the table so so icg i think is 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 truly a disruptive technology and it has added to the comfort of breast cancer patients uh, so we can, uh, 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 what is the method of injection? Is it IV or around the tumor? No, we, uh, we, uh, it can be done peritumorally. It can be done yes. uh, uh, subaerular, subdermal, sub subaerular, peritumoral. All three are used. We, we use it sub, sub, subaerular. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Thank all, you. all are equally good. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Rava. Uh, uh, Dr. Tega Bakabashi, there are uh, questions for you too. Uh, uh, this is actually answered. Still, I will read out the question from the chat box. Uh, what is the minimum interval prior to surgery we have to inject ICG? Actually, we you showed a table regarding this one. Still, uh, for the audience, can you please repeat once again? Okay. Um, for, uh, for tumor detection, maybe. Yeah, so, both for okay. tumor detection uh, and for Section. Thank you very much. Um, so for tumor detection, uh, in there are difference between normal liver and uh, impaired liver, but uh, usually in healthy liver, liver, uh, uh, one should maybe inject ICG uh, s within seven days prior to surgery. Uh, but in impaired liver, like liver cirrhosis, uh, we have to take more. Uh, you know, uh, prolonged- uh, Like 14 days. days. Prior to such like seven to 14 days, yes. And 0 0.5 milligram per kilogram is a usual uh, dosage. And can, Vega, can, I, can I ask, uh, what is the role of a, a radiologist actually doing the injection, positive uh, staining? Mm -hmm. Can the radiologist cannulate the portal vein and inject? Ah. It, Do you mean uh, who uh, inject the portal venous branch? Correct. In, in, instead of the Glissonian approach, portal vein ah. branch, can the radiologist help you uh, in the cath lab? Uh, uh, we, because it's difficult for us to organize this. Uh, the, the way you have injected, I think, uh, truly appreciate the the, the planning and uh, and the learning the the glissonian approach going exactly into the into the portal vein that is something that most of us would not be able to achieve uh, too soon because there is there is a need for a lot of uh, coordination you need to learn uh, intraop ultrasound well or you should be supported by radiologist so can the radiologist do in the cath lab and uh, send the patient to us uh, yeah thank you for your question 
actually, as you know, uh, the photo positive staining is very, uh, very difficult actually. And oh. uh, especially for manipulating uh, ultrasound uh, and stabilize the images uh, with uh, puncturing uh, by a needle, it's very uh, difficult. Uh, and uh, sometimes, you know, uh, the successful rate, rate is not so high, actually, to be honest. So like uh, for negative staining, for sure, uh, we uh, can achieve a successful rate uh, almost 100%, like uh, more than 95%. But uh, a positive staining, it's like, uh, you know, 50%, half and half. So uh, the main point is uh, puncture itself. And also uh, when puncture uh, is well done, uh, still uh, the you know, staining is uh, distributed not so well sometimes. So it depends on maybe a lamina flow or portal vein or some, something. So maybe there are trick, uh, for example, like uh, clamping the art hepatic artery uh, during portal venous injection. But uh, we sh maybe it's future uh, research topic to sophisticate this uh, procedure. So we uh, uh, usually, uh, they can aid from the radiologist for a preoperative pre simulation itself. Uh, but uh, for positive, so intraoperative positive staining is uh, done by uh, ourselves only. So it's uh, difficult, but uh, we recently we uh, achieved a uh, you know, nice uh, <clears throat> method for uh, puncturing the uh, portal vein and the ultrasound. Uh, uh, Professor Taiga, actually, I, we have seen the laparoscopic ultrasound probe with a uh, hole in the middle that you are injecting this one. Actually, uh, that is not available in India. We used to have the wedge one, means we can detach the wedge and then apply uh, this thing. We used to use it for uh, um, RFA ablation and all. So okay. uh, which company you are using? Yes, um, thank you. So, so thank you for your question. Uh, it's very nice. Um, you know, we use uh, maybe different from you, uh, the BK medical system, which is very uh, dedicated system for a positive staining to actually, there are a hole uh, in the, the tip of the probe uh, and uh, we can uh, put the needle guide to the hole and uh, it, uh, makes the facilitation of the needle uh, puncture. So maybe it is the uh, only solution for, for the moment, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dr. T.S. Uh, Rao, we can um, um, take the questions from the- Yeah, uh, we'll do that. Yeah. Is there any contraindication for usage of ICG? Any, any serious adverse uh, reactions you have encountered so far? Mudassir, Mudassir Yan Shadar asks you, any contraindication for usage of ICG? Any serious adverse effects you have encountered so far? I have not encountered so far. Um, it's a very, uh, maybe few few uh, adverse events actually. Correct. By ICG. What about Although uh, an anaphylaxis is reported, but uh, at the doses that are used, Mm, uh, we have never seen any, any problem. Mm -hmm. Anaphylaxis is, is reported. Dr. T.S., um, uh, actually, when you showed uh, the stomach part, actually, you made a very important remark regarding the, uh, the staging of uh, stomach cancer. Actually, uh, it is not in the usual way we used to get uh, uh, in the staging, like lead to dissection and all. The spread of uh, not the uh, spread of disease in the nodes. So, if do you think if it was in the uh, the uh, the post ICG era, the uh, the nodal staging would be different? I I don't know. I I hope it would not become different because see uh, if you don't achieve the number of nodes, what happens is uh, by you you know in in the clinic. Uh, you have done, you know, you have done an anatomical lymphadenectomy. 
you have, uh, you have isolated all the three three branches and then you have done the celiac dissection also and uh, the pathologist reports it has uh, eight nodes now the medical oncologist interprets this as inadequate surgery and uh, once it is inadequate there is a chance that the adjuvant therapy gets hiked up Radi radiation therapy might come into the picture so this inadequacy is something that you would not be comfortable with. So the, the methods of preventing this is when you have done a good job, it should, it should be shown on the report. The, uh, the method is either you do the lymph node, uh, lymph node uh, bench dissection, the, the way Japanese do it very meticulously, or uh, you choose a pathologist with all, all the fat dissolving agents and things like that. Choose a pathologist who, is, who actually matches your uh, skills and uh, uh, this is also a very, very simple adjunct because if you put that camera down and then see the greenness and dissect, you'll be surprised that your bench dissection without ICG and your bench dissection with, with ICG, the nodal yield is different. Yeah. We, have, we, have, we have found 152 nodes in a right hemicolectomy in, in one of our patients. Uh, uh, that's what I meant. If it was yeah. in the post ICG era, <laughs> they, they, I, I hope it, it, it they wouldn't. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there are some uh, hands raised. Uh, Doctor Nam uh, Neem Ahmed, can you please unmute yourself and uh, uh, ask the questions? Doctor Neem, please. Okay, uh, Professor Sendapan, can you hear me? Yeah, can you please introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Dr. Naeem Ahmed. Probably I was the one who I introduced you, Taiga Wakabayashi, to you. It was months okay. ago that, okay. yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Nowadays, I am here in London for a robotic workshop. And uh, it was an informative presentation by both of our speakers. They are very prominent surgeons of their field. My question to Taiga Wakabayashi is, I, actually I know him and uh, I also know his father as well, who is a legend in HPV surgery. He was the one who performed the first robotic uh, liver resection in 2002. And then he is the one who is the ambassador of the minimally invasive parenchymal sparing liver resection because the uh, open liver resections were done by Makuchi and then Guido Torzilli. But Professor Wakabayashi actually rev revolutionized the parenchymal sparing minimally invasive liver surgery. So my question to Taiga Wakabayashi is, as the AGO hospital where he works is an advanced hospital where they uh, introduce all the softwares, as Professor Rao said, that they do the colors and all. They make a, uh, just like an atlas. And uh, their people are far more advanced. So for them, they can do the intricate dissections. But for those who are still in the birding stages in the minimal invasive surgery. So how uh, do you, uh, what are your indications or the criteria for ICG negative or ICG positive liver resections in terms of tumor? Because you said that ICG positive, this is what I heard, that it has also the flaws that the ICG can scatter, um, I mean, sideways, and it can also confound the resection margins. Then if it is, it can confound the resection margins then why we have to go for this intricate, uh, I mean, the technique where it is not technically possible for many of the surgeons. So why then are you going for the ICG positive if ICG negative is much more safer than it? Very good question. Uh, Dr. Teiga, please. Uh, thank you very much for your very nice question. And uh, thank you for introducing me to Dr. Sinadipa. And um, so um, very nice question. Um, so. For, uh, for the moment, uh, our principle is uh, to perform a Grisonian approach for even for uh, so in any case, you know, and, uh, you know, for HCC, hepatocellular carcinoma, uh, there are evidence to perform anatomic resection, but uh, not for uh, correct meds or some, some uh, metastasis, but uh, we, uh, consistently perform anatomic resection even for these kind of meds, meds. and um, our uh, you know principle is as you know uh, parenchymal sparing uh, anatomic resection so which is very revolutionized I think um, you know parenchymal preserving 
uh, concept is you uh, initially advocated in uh, colorectal meds. Uh, that means uh, kind of which resection, partial resection for uh, big uh, liver uh, meds. But uh, we uh, believe the parenchymal preserving concept and anatomic resection can uh, exist together. So that uh, we uh, pursued to perform a small anatomic resection, which is uh, maybe initially advocated by uh, Dr. Mark Uji uh, or Dr. Takasaki. So that's from Japanese uh, legendary surgeons. So, and uh, we pursued it in minimally invasive uh, way. And uh, as for your question, uh, positive and negative indication for uh, negative and positive staining, uh, is a very nice research topic, I think. And uh, in the staining, uh, negative staining is our uh, basic uh, pr principle. So we usually perform a Grisonia approach even for uh, segment eight and seven, which is uh, difficult and uh, deeply located uh, in the uh, hilum. Uh, but uh, we, we is believe uh, we can achieve uh, these a uh, uh, little bit complicated, uh, but uh, we can um, you know achieve uh, this uh, Grisonia approach for uh, G87, uh, even uh, <clears throat> uh, this kind of uh, segment. So, <clears throat> by the way, a positive staining is a little bit difficult, as uh, I said. So. Uh, but uh, sometimes, you know, uh, Grisonian pedicle five, uh, it, uh, tumor located in segment eight, we have to uh, <clears throat> find the G8 uh, from the forest, uh, among the forest of uh, G5 in front of G8. So in, the, in such case, maybe uh, we have to switch my mind, our mind to, to do a positive staining. Uh, I mean, uh, segment eight or sometimes segment seven. So this posterior, posterior superior segment, uh, positive staining can be uh, done uh, selectively. So that's my answer. If, you, if I hope I'm uh, correct to the answer to you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Neem. Uh, do you have any question? Any yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you for introducing Tega uh, to me. Oh, no, no problem. You have a very, very, I mean, a global platform. So everybody will be happy to come to your platform. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And Dr. Anahel uh, from Bangladesh, can you please unmute? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Professor Bayu, sir, do you hear me? Everyone hear me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Bayu, sir. And uh, uh, is, uh, our ambassador from Bangladesh. Uh, thank you, sir. I am Dr. Anhar Rahman from Bangladesh. I'm ambassador, but right now I'm in clinical fellow in HBP in National Cancer Institute, Thailand. Now, uh, right now I'm in Bangkok. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Tiger, sir, and Dr. Rao, sir, for a fantastic presentation. Uh, I have a question to Dr. Tiger, sir. Uh, uh, right now, I am doing my fellowship training and Professor Ravisak Chanwat. Maybe you know him. And um, uh, he's a very fantastic laparoscopic liver surgeon. I, and every day I saw uh, different ICG-based liver resection. Uh, sir, uh, my question is that um, in, in CI uh, for liver resection, uh, in your in your AGU, in your university hospital, what you follow in uh, liver resection. We know before liver resection, preoperative planning, we do some planning for the patient. Uh, for example, the FLR is less than 30 percent, uh, above the 30 percent, and ICG is less than 10. Or uh, there is a Takasaki formula. But in your university, um, uh, for a liver resection, what formula you use in ICG base? Thank you very much for your question. Uh, you mean uh, maybe <clears throat> for renal liver function, we use uh, Makuchi criteria. Yeah. Mm. Oh, oh, so so you use the Makuchi criteria in, in your center. Yes. Okay. Basically. So another 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 question is that sometimes we found in ICG uh, during right hepatectomy. 
uh, there is not exact clean cut margin uh, because some collaterals are uh, giving the impression of some left side. Then uh, we think the intraoperative laparoscopy ultrasonogram to demarcate the middle hepatic vein, to target the middle hepatic vein. So in your case in, in Japan, in your center, uh, so every time you confirm, you, every time you um, depend on ICG navigation or you routinely use intraoperative ultrasonogram? Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, we routinely uh, use uh, ultrasound to know the hepatic intrahepatic structures. And uh, yes, but uh, <clears throat> using a uh, negative staining approach, uh, we rarely, rarely uh, encounter the contamination from the adjacent segments. So maybe that's because uh, we uh, we routinely perform a Grisonia approach. So we don't do uh, uh, such a, you know, individual uh, dissection from the liver hilum. So maybe using a uh, to avoid a, this kind of contamination of the ICG emission, I think. Okay, thank you, thank you, sir. Dr. Pankaj, can you please unmute Dr. Pankaj? Hello. Yeah, uh, good morning, sir. I just wanted to know one thing uh, from Dr. T.S. That is there a handheld uh, ICG camera uh, which could be utilized here in India because uh, the other cameras are very costly. So if you are working in some uh, uh, rural area or in a setup which is uh, having very poor patients, can this be utilized for them? Do you have any yeah, idea yeah. about it? Yeah. What I would uh, suggest is uh, it's not not uh, not necessary to do minimal minimally invasive surgery in every part of the country. What you need to have if you have to do a good job for these patients is to have a open camera. There are uh, at least two companies which uh, uh, supply that in this country. Pinpoint is uh, by Striker. It's expensive. It costs about, uh, I don't know, uh, 30, 40 lakhs. And it's a one-time investment. It will work for years. And uh, ICG, you know, is available as RO Green here. The, yeah. the, the vial costs 1,800 rupees. And if you are a high volume center in, a, in our place, it costs 300 rupees per patient because we use it for six, seven patients on the same day. So uh, you have another camera which is made in India. I am not able to recollect the name, but uh, I can uh, pass it on to you. I'll uh, type my number here. Uh, yes. it, it's much cheaper, much cheaper, and it's it's not as good, but good good enough for all the central node biopsies and the basic perfusion studies. Yes, yes. Thank you very much, sir. It doesn't have the overlay mode, but uh, I think it works. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Pankaj. Uh, Dr. Uh, Hanan uh, from Saudi Arabia. Just now only I added him to, to Senadim Education Foundation. You have been added to the main group, uh, Dr. Hanan. Yes. Hi, hi. Um, thank you for giving me this uh, opportunity to ask question. I tried my best to uh, catch as much as I can. I, I'm in the middle of my clinic. But uh, it was very interesting uh, topic. I'm, I'm, I'm a hepatobiliary surgeon, multi-organ transplant. Uh, and uh, this uh, subject is, is, is uh, not widely adopted here. However, uh, we are gaining experience. I was wondering uh, if, if you have experience with other liver myths, like neuroendocrine myths. Uh, so, uh, do you, do, you, do you deal with other tumors other than uh, a colorectal or uh, uh, SCG? Uh, so uh, if you have any, any experience with other uh, liver myths. Yes, uh, thank you for your question. Um, <clears throat> but I think... Uh, I have not encountered so much uh, uh, various etiology, 
uh, you know, uh, other than uh, HCC and correct commits. But uh, maybe in, in the literature, there are uh, several reports about uh, neuroendocrine tumor and uh, FNH and, and uh, maybe from and the meds from the lung. And uh, these are uh, uh, these expressing some uh, staining uh, in the tumor. The maybe hypervascular tumor uh, should uh, uh, pertain the ICG uh, well. And the hypervascular tumor, uh, maybe uh, on the contrary, not so well perfused. So that's my uh, answer. Thank you, Dr. Hanem. Um, Dr. T.S. Rao, uh, there are a lot of questions for you in the chat box. Uh, for you, I'll be um, uh, reading uh, one by one. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Uh, which 3D reconstruction do you use for liver B before surgery, I suppose? The software. Yeah. Talking about the, which software you are using. Which 3D software do you use for re reconstruction of the liver when you do the simulation? For me. Yeah, for Thank you. you. Uh, uh, the Station. Do you know? Maybe from Japan, Japanese company. Uh, I used oh. to use uh, Fuji, Synapse Vincent from Fuji, but uh, now uh, in this hospital we use uh, Zio Station. Uh, that's the, the name of the company, uh, the name of the software, I think. Yeah. It's not available elsewhere, probably. Is it not? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, some uh, Asian countries actually, I, I uh, visited the uh, Chiang Memorial Hospital, Taiwan, almost 16 years back. They were using the same technique years, uh, years back. So Changun Memorial Hospital, Taiwan. Uh, actually, I, I saw it for the first time there only, uh, 10, 16 years back. Yeah, it is available uh, in other countries also. Probably we may not be uh, chasing it. I know. The, uh, the, there is a question from uh, Al Tahir. He asks about uh, ureteric visualization. Yeah. I think uh, he has typed a long uh, message. Uh, uh, right now, ureteric visualization truly is yeah, cannot be done by ICG uh, given systemically. You have to catheterize the ure ureter and inject into the ureter, which is an invasive procedure with a failure rate. And sometimes uh, there can be ureteric trauma also, significant trauma, trauma also. So it's not the best of the things that you can do. But there are lots of dice in development. Uh, they are not named as yet, and then they are not FDA cleared because of their toxicity to human beings. They are in the uh, uh, on the bench. They have not come to the bedside. So um, there are there are dyes being developed. There is a, a dye called uh, ICDYE five hundred something. Uh, uh, you can you can type uh, fluorescence of uh, ureter. It, it comes in. Uh, it's almost nearing FDA approval. So the other important thing that uh, is coming up big is the, the NIR2. What we, we are working with is near infrared one range that is 700 to 900 nanometers. So the NIR2 is something that is coming up strong because the signal to uh, noise uh, ratio is much uh, wider. So the the range is 1000 to 1700. That is when you can actually visualize much deeper structures. The visualization now is 0.5 to 1 centimeter deep. So if you have NIR2 capturing camera systems, which are uh, once again uh, uh, um, being developed. So once that happens, I think uh, each one of us should be using uh, ICG navigation. Everything will become much more clearer, and from a, from a distance you can see these structures lighting up. So there are there are dyes that are being developed. There are there are a flurry of dyes. That's what it's, it's said. 
flurry of dice that are going to flood the market. So before that, I think the youngsters should learn to use what is already available. Uh, and then what I would have want to ask Taiga is, uh, uh, are you missing the overlay mode in the robotic? And are you missing the QSA also in the robotic? Yes. Um, I think uh, the, this is a very nice, <clears throat> uh, important point. So <clears throat> maybe overlay mode uh, can be hopefully uh, achieved in near future. But uh, I think uh, QSA uh, in the robot robotic setting is a little bit uh, uh, difficult for the moment. I heard about that. So yeah, so we maybe switch to uh, the, the clamp crash clamping method for the moment in the near future, but uh, we don't know uh, yet, yeah. So, so the, the, the best machine for uh, your um, ICG navigation would be a robo with overlay mode and a rested QSA, is it not? Yeah, but uh, yes. uh, overlay mode, sure, yeah. Yeah, okay. so, QSA, uh, you, you, you are skeptical about QSA being developed with a, with a rested arm. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Baiju, sir, yes. how, do I, how do I get these recordings is something that is being asked. Uh, Baiju, I already told you. Uh, yeah. uh, it will be available in the YouTube channel of Sayanadim Education Foundation. Either you can uh, uh, see it uh, tomorrow or day after tomorrow, it will be uploaded. Or uh, for the other webinar videos, you can just subscribe the uh, Senate Education Foundation YouTube channel, and that will automatically come to your uh, mobile, so you can um, uh, watch at any time. So it is free uh, uh, for watching. So you can subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel of Senate Education Foundation. There is another question uh, by Joe. I think it's for me. When do you inject ICG to visualize thoracic duct? You, you anesthetize the patient, patient is in supine position, get the, get the ultrasound and uh, localize the lymph node. There will always be a lymph node irrespective of whether you are barefooted or otherwise. So, the, uh, so uh, inject one cc. Uh, what, we, what is available in India is 25 milligram vials. We make it 2.5 milligrams uh, uh, diluted with 10 ml. So, so one cc, 2.5 milligrams into, into each node on either side, and then turn the patient for thoracoscopy. So the duration is 20 minutes. When we saw it in 10 minutes also, we could see the duct. So in 10 minutes, you see the duct. Yeah, there was a question by Dr. Dattaram regarding ICG usage for thoracic duct in, uh, in injuries. And he is asking about trauma and about uh, post-operative injuries. See, what, what is done, we, we have done about five or six patients. Two of them were operated elsewhere, rest were our patients. We inject into the node and, uh, and go back in. Patient must have been thoracoscopied already. Uh, uh, um, one 10 mm port and two 5 mm's and then and then uh, put a push in a gauze piece and 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 push this stomach conduit away. Go low in the thorax, and if the ICG is there, then uh, everything is seen. Otherwise, you you dissect onto the azagas vein, go dorsally to reach the iota, and whatever is the tissue between the azagas vein and the iota is the thoracic duct always. Uh, if the ICG is there, then you be guided by the ICG. You don't have to identify any anatomy. Just go 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 to the duct and then slip a clip across. Yeah, and in case of um, you were talking asking about another uh, situation that uh, suppose a patient comes to you with an uh, injury uh, by probably a road tra a traffic accident or so, and there is a uh, injury to the thoracic duct. Can you identify it uh, with ICG uh, uh, mode? Yeah, it depends on where the injury is. Uh, I think it, it's not difficult to solve this problem, except if it is at the cisterna chylae or in the in the abdominal part of it. Abdominal part is a very short course, and if there is an injury there, I think uh, I think it's it's a serious problem because there is esophagus there, there is stomach there. 
there is a iota there so and uh, the hiatus it's not easy anatomy at all so that is where probably um, it's going to be difficult but in, in anything above that i think it's very easy to reach the hiatus and uh, and clip this and if you have icg believe me it's it's child's play it's actually child's play it's one of the easiest procedures you may not have the best of the patients because they they will be having coagulation abnormalities they will be completely protein deficient they don't tolerate uh, um, uh, anesthesia well so um, you may need to hurry up but otherwise i think it's a technically simple procedure in a difficult patient so it's nearly 1 uh, o'clock and 36 minutes uh, in tokyo uh, <laughs> that to on a monday yeah <laughs> <The> sunday <laughs> <laughs> so probably uh, uh, professor taiga i have to leave so if uh, there are no questions sir, i think i have we have taken all the questions from the chat box and if you tell any any more questions which are not answered uh, please uh, write to me either in the whatsapp or in the uh, the mail we will be answering we will be happy to answer the all the questions by dr taiga wakabashi and uh, dr uh, Yes, Rao, and uh, I take this opportunity to to congratulate and uh, uh, and uh, appreciate the effort made by both the speakers. Actually, I asked Dr. T. S. Rao in the morning only. I asked him a flower, and he gave me a bouquet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thank you so much. Thank and, you so much, by the way. You are a yeah, you are a great friend, and you are a blessing. To be very honest. Yes. You. Also, Taiga actually um, um, he was introduced to me by Dr. Naim, um, and uh, we want uh, your father's presentation also. Actually, he is a pioneer in the field of uh, liver surgery, especially uh, he is the first one to do the robotic uh, liver resection and all. And lot of many first to his credit. Actually, we want his presentation also in our platform. Uh, we will be approaching you for uh, the same, and please recommend. <laughs> please <laughs> recommend <laughs> yes for sure <laughs> for his presentation and uh, okay. thank you all the all the uh, ambassadors of senad education we have 45 ambassadors in 45 countries and thank you all the ambassadors for uh, for uh, logging in from different parts of the world uh, though it's uh, uh, different time zones and thank you all the delegates from different parts of the world for uh, uh, joining um yeah if any further queries are there please write to me and uh, uh, for the next webinar that is going to happen on 12th of uh, february by uh, victor rado on uh, retromuscular repair laparoscopy and uh, uh, and uh, robotically um, we will meet again uh, till then uh, we let us say bye so though though we wanted to discuss again and again thank you very much bhaiyu uh... It's always a pleasure being on this platform. Something that is very special, to be very honest. Uh, at the risk of repetition, I think I truly admire your your work and what you have done for the scientific community. Thank you, Taiga. Wonderful seeing you on this platform. Hope to meet you, uh, thank you very much. personally sometime. Thank yeah, you, and thank all you the much. listeners. Thank you very much for a patient hearing. Taiga, do you have anything to say? Yeah, um, Professor Senadipa, uh, thank you for inviting me to this uh, wonderful uh, presentation. And uh, this is a previous uh, prestigious, uh, uh, you know, uh, happiness for me. <laughs> and uh, Dr. Naim, thank you for introducing me again to uh, Dr. Senadipa. And uh, thank you for moderating me, uh, Dr. Rao. Uh, it was a very nice presentation. And uh, I learned a lot from your presentation. Thank you very much. and uh, thank you dr rava for introducing this speaker and uh, uh, moderator and she is from correct yeah thank you very thank much you. thank you very much we will meet uh, on again thank you all thank you very very much for uh, this opportunity also and thank you so much for the talk it was very nice thank you thank you